Hello, it's Lady Ada at the Ada Fruit Workbench, and we're going to do a little tutorial about USB serial converters, which is a topic a lot of people have been asking us about lately. So first I want to talk about the history of serial and parallel, and how you can't use this anymore. So it used to be that every computer would have parallel port and serial port on it, and a parallel port was used for printers and stuff, and serial ports were often used for GPSs or PDAs or computer mice. Um, however, nowadays, these cables aren't used anymore. They've been replaced with USB. Uh, and USB ports are really common. They're on Macs and Windows computers. Um, they're a lot uh, faster than serial or parallel, which is great for users, but they're a lot more complicated, which means that if you're hacking microcontrollers, it's a little more difficult to use it than just connecting straight to the serial or parallel ports. So one option, if you're thinking, well, I just want to get that serial port back, is to get a USB to serial converter. And these are like $10, you can get them at Best Buy, and they have USB on one end, and then a straight up serial port on the other, so you can connect old serial devices. And these work great if you're using like an old PDA or an old GPS and you want to hook it up to your computer, but they're not good for microcontrollers, and I'll show you why. Um, so serial was designed a really long time ago, and one of the things that they did to make sure that it could go very long distances is to make sure that the data lines are plus or minus 10 volts. So that's 20 volts between the positive and negative um, signal lines, which is way too high for a microcontroller. Most microcontrollers over here run at maybe 3 or 5 volts. So if you tried to connect a serial port directly to your microcontroller, you'd probably zap it and you'd have smoke come out. So what you can do, if you're uh, so interested, is you can connect a serial port to a microcontroller, but you'll need to use a MAX-232 chip. Here's a MAX-232 chip. And this would go in the middle, and then this would convert the 20 volts to 5 volts, and it would be all happy and work great. And here's, for example, a uh, converter I built in like 2004 or something, and this converts serial um, 20 volt to 5 volt for microcontroller projects. So we did this for a long time, and then um, people started noticing that there were actually some really nice USB to serial converter chips that you could use that would actually do all of this signal leveling and USB and serial for you so you could safely connect them to microcontrollers. So for example, um, one of the chips that I really liked is the FTDI, and this is an adapter I built in 2003 uh, from a microcontroller project, and so you can see this is meant to plug into a breadboard, and there's a USB connector, and then this FT232BM chip, some LEDs, and a crystal. And uh, basically, the nice thing about this is it combines the functionality of a MAX-232 and this serial converter and USB all together so you get this clean voltage out, as well as 5 volts from the power supply of your computer that you can use to power your projects. So that's very handy. So, um, the latest version of this chip is the uh, FT232RL, and you can see it right here actually on an Arduino, which is one of the nice things about Arduinos. There is this USB port and um, FTDI chip already built into it, so you can program the chip or do debugging information, transfer back and forth. So that's really handy, but what if you're not using an Arduino? You want to move on or you're using a different microcontroller like a PIC? Well, um, we suggest using something like an FTDI cable. And this cable um, from FTDI actually has um, the FTDI chip inside of it right here. Uh, and there's a plug that goes directly to your computer. And on the other side is some color-coded wires that have the power and serial data transmit and receive, much like this breadboarded version from a long time ago. So this is very handy. You can plug this in, and data comes out uh, cleanly for three or five volt microcontroller projects. Uh, we have a couple of options other than this, which one of which is um, this is an FTDI friend, which is a project we just finished. And this is a compact version of the cable. So uh, one reason you might want to use something like this is it's smaller and lighter, so you can embed it in a project. You can use any USB cable to connect to it, which may be useful for you. Um, it's less expensive. And uh, one of the things we like about this design is that you can change the voltage from 5 to 3 volts, especially for projects that need to use one or the other and are not 
um, compatible between the two, so you can uh, change it around. And there's also LEDs that blink when you uh, receive or transmit data, and that can be useful to check if your project's working. So if you have something like an XB, which transmits at three volts serial, not 20 volts, you can't use one of these cables. You have to use an FTDI cable, which plugs into the bottom here. And then if you have something like an Arduino clone or any other microcontroller project that needs serial data, you also will want to use an FTDI cable because it's running at three or five volts, not 20. One last thing. So a lot of people ask, well, what's the difference between a USB Teeny or other AVR programmer and an FTDI cable? They both plug into USB and they're both used to program AVRs. Well, they're actually confusingly different. Both do use USB and they both are used to program AVRs, but the USB Teeny and other AVR programmers are used to program raw chips, like they come from the factory. These chips are completely blank and have no bootloader on them, so you would use USB Teeny or Dragon or SDK500 uh, or any other AVR programmer to get a bootloader on there or whatever firmware you wrote. On the other hand, if you have a chip that already has a bootloader on it, like an Arduino chip, you can use an FTDI cable because the FTDI cable communicates with the bootloader that's already programmed onto the chip. So you can use something like a USB T to put the bootloader on and then the FTDI cable to upload new firmware via the bootloader.